Hi, everyone. I'm Joris Lam. I'm a designer from Amsterdam. And among some of the things I design are theme parks, uh, but I also work with fashion designers on new ethics in fashion. But my most meaningful design has been this birdhouse. Now, I know, generally speaking, designing a birdhouse isn't a life-changing experience, but for me, designing this one absolutely was. Because this birdhouse forever changed the way how I feel about the environment and my health. This all started six months ago, when I was having a coffee in a cafe in the street where I live. And as I was looking out the window, I noticed the amount of cars and trucks passing through my street, pumping out exhaust fumes right in the place where I live. And seeing this made me wonder, how bad is air pollution in my street, and what does it do to my health? So I went on a mission to find what I thought would be a very simple answer to this simple question. So I started researching online, and the first thing I found was this. This is a map of the city, Amsterdam, where I live, and those green dots are places where the city measures air quality, and the little greenhouse in the middle is where I live. So it's not very close to my house, but I decided to go and look for one of these stations anyway in, in hopes of finding more answers. So I finally got there, and this is what I saw. A big, clunky machine hidden in plain sight. You can see some bells and whistles sticking out of it. But this sight, this machine, really gave me no answers at all. Instead, what this machine does is it produces data. And that data looks like this. Well, <laughs> I'm just a designer. I'm not a scientist. So looking at these graphs, I really didn't know what that meant for me. I didn't know if it meant the air quality was bad or good or if it impacted my health or not. Um, so really, I, I, didn't, I didn't know anything at all looking at this. What I did find out, though, were some very worrying facts, but some facts in general. In Amsterdam, we have some of the worst air quality in Europe. And here in Naples, you probably also hear about a citywide problem. So what is a citywide problem? Well, it's the negative health effects of air pollution. We know that in general, air pollution can cause lung disease, heart disease, and new research has shown that brain disease is also one of the things that probably can be caused by air pollution. So we know we're being suffocated by, by air pollution in our cities, and we're being suffocated by the city as a whole. But what we don't know are the levels of exposure to that air pollution from street to street. We don't know how polluted the air is in the places where we live or work or where your kids go to school. There's just no data for that. So after a lot of frustration about this, I found something that changed everything for me. I found out about a group of people all over the world that measure their own environment. They don't wait for a government to do something for them. They just build sensors and they start measuring on their own. And these are people that have no scientific education whatsoever. This can be anyone. And this is called citizen science. And the projects you see with people doing citizen science are very diverse, but all very creative. There are people in Kosovo who measure air quality themselves because the government simply doesn't do it anywhere. Two people in Brazil flying kites like this one that is packed with sensors, and those sensors measure air quality, and it generates data about the soil underneath. So people are getting very creative with this. And as a designer, this really inspired me. I felt empowered to start my own citizen science project and to really share this idea with lots of other people. So that's why I started Tree Wi-Fi. This is Tree Wi-Fi. This is an early prototype. This is the new design. And what this does is this is a smart birdhouse that measures air pollution. When the air is polluted in a street, the birdhouse becomes red, showing you that something's wrong. But when the air is clean, or it's becoming cleaner, it becomes green, and it gives free Wi-Fi to everyone in the street. Because we all know that there are two things the modern man needs to live, and that is clean air and free Wi-Fi. So 
that is why I started this. But this is, of course, not just about giving free Wi-Fi. This project is about making the invisible visible. And I do this by using gamification. When tree Wi-Fi is installed in a neighborhood and the birdhouse is red in one street, but a few streets away it's always green and those people have free Wi-Fi, that's really when the game begins. And the rule of the game is simple. You have to work together with your neighbors as a community to make your birdhouse green again by polluting less in the place where you live. So this turns ordinary neighbors into a team of players playing something with a very meaningful end result. And this is the beauty of gamification. Gamification turns a subject that is usually ignored or perceived as a pain to deal with into something fun and interactive and easily accessible for everyone. So by playing this game, people go from being a passive citizen to becoming a citizen scientist. Now, this is very different from current practice. Typically, currently, a government will hire scientists to buy these big machines we just saw, generating lots of data, writing big reports about it, and then those reports are handed over to lawmakers. Those lawmakers do what their job is, they make laws, but the citizen is really left out of the equation because the citizen isn't, taken, isn't part of the process up until the very last step when the laws are put into place. And now these are then laws that combat a problem people maybe don't even know exists. So is this something that the government does wrong? Well, I think it's something that we can all do better. When you think about it, a birdhouse like this and a playful attitude is really all it takes for people to start improving their own environment and their own health. And I think this is so powerful because this is the combination between citizen science and gamification. This makes the world healthier and more fun at the same time. So it's easily accessible for almost everyone. And now some people may think they're not the type to play games. Well, I think if someone has ever taken a sprint to make that green traffic light or caught a speck of dust flying through the air and they felt a slight level of achievement afterwards, they've been playful. I think everyone is playful. And by harnessing the power of citizen science and gamification, we can turn that playfulness into meaningfulness. And that playfulness can change the world. Thank you.